Hello, my name is Anthony Davis. I'm an attorney with the law offices of Christopher S. Nudo. We're a law firm that's located in Rolling Meadows, and we regularly do estate planning, probate, real estate, and then also some commercial law as well. Today, what I wanted to talk about was some of the common mistakes that people make in estate planning. And before I go further into this topic, I just want to reframe real quick the idea of estate planning. I know a lot of times you talk to practitioners out there and they'll focus on the challenges and difficulties and expenses of probate. And while those are all true, I just kind of want to remind everybody that the real reason why we should be doing estate planning is just love of family. We don't want to burden our family members and we want to make things easier for them. And this is important because the common mistakes that people make tend to be connected with the importance of family. So the first of those is just procrastinating doing the estate plan. And there's a lot of practical reasons why this is a pitfall. For instance, procrastinating doing estate planning, you eventually lose the ability to plan for an estate at all if a person develops cognitive disorders, as well as the fact that it substantially increases the costs associated with the practitioner doing that planning. Suddenly you have to pay for the attorney to drive out to the assisted care facility or the nursing home or the hospital in order to execute that will or that trust. But the real problem with procrastination is that by doing that, we're giving up the ability to have those really important conversations with our loved ones while we still have the chance to do that. So kind of think of it a little bit like this. Any of the important roles associated with an estate plan, whether you're an executor, a successor trustee, or if you are an agent to a power of attorney, that these are all big responsibilities and big jobs. And when they're gonna go into effect, typically it's because a loved one has experienced something terrible. There tends to be a lot of emotion. Everyone has a different movie playing in their head. And by having these conversations now, while we're healthy, we make it where we can set those loved ones up so that when they step into those roles, they know what's going on and we can carefully select the people that have the proper temperament for that role. And in addition, we're being clear as to what it is that mom or dad wanted while they were still healthy. The delay and oftentimes the illnesses associated with aging can't become a potential reason for somebody to dispute the legitimacy of these documents or these selections. So I would encourage you all to get your estate plan done while you're still able to have those important conversations to set those loved ones up for success. Another pitfall is that by putting off the estate plan can create a scenario, not really thinking about it, it can create a scenario where in particular with minor children, where we're giving them a large inheritance all at once, once they achieve legal age for inheritance, which in the state of Illinois is 21. The reason that we care about that is everyone is different. Every human being has their own nuances and temperaments and personalities. And while some people might be okay with receiving 50,000 or 100,000 or several hundred thousand dollars at age 21, for other family members, they might still need some time to mature. It might be better for them to receive that inheritance over an extended period of time in percentages so that they can engage with it in a more healthy way. And then of course, there also are other practical problems as well. Sometimes people have substance abuse issues. And then also sometimes we have loved ones that might have disabilities or special needs, and we don't wanna have those special needs disrupted by a large inheritance that no one had thought to take into account the effect that it would have on their state or federal benefits. Some other things to think about, another pitfall I find is just not taking into account the effects of the passage of time. So maybe we put that estate plan together well, we had those minor children, we should revisit that as time goes on. So as a couple decades, five years, 10 years, 15 years go on by, things change. And it's important that we step in and make sure that the beneficiary forms on the checking, the savings, any insurance products, or any retirement accounts out there are still how they should be. Kind of the nightmare story that you'll hear occasionally will be the person that gets divorced and then doesn't change their beneficiary forms. We want to make sure that the estate 10 years later still matches up the goals of the estate when it was drafted. And of course, also as minor children age, 
it's important to make adjustments to the document to take that into account as well. Another interesting pitfall that we'll run into every once in a while is going to be things like NFTs, Bitcoin. These are all kind of new developments that are happening in the financial and the artistic world where people will have these assets, these digital assets, cryptocurrencies, and so forth. And some special thoughts should be given to how those assets are going to be passing on to the next generation. So those are the most common pitfalls that we tend to run into. So again, just to repeat those, the biggest mistake is going to be procrastinating because you give up your ability to have those important conversations with your loved ones. And then also not taking into account the different ages and temperaments of in particular children and then creating a scenario where they receive a large inheritance in a lump sum all at once and then also those general housekeeping matters that sometimes occur over the course of years so this would be getting a divorce getting remarried having another child the estate should be looked at and updated and that has a very profound effect oftentimes on those loved ones and then in addition, the development of new asset types, cryptocurrencies, NFTs, and so forth. If you've been acquiring those, or if you have a loved one that's been acquiring those, those are oftentimes special assets that should be treated in a special way. And we really should review that estate plan to make sure that it still functions as you intend. So those are all of the common pitfalls that we run into. If you'd like, you can come on in for a consult and we'd be happy to review that estate plan and make sure that it's still going to do what it is that you want it to do. Or if you've been kind of on the fence, this is a wonderful time to come on in, have a brief consult with us. And then we can begin the process of having those important conversations and getting those critical documents in place. If you do have any follow-up questions, feel free to reach out to me. Our phone number is 847-737-1800. And my extension is 105. And my email is anthony at nudo.net. But we hope to hear from you. Other than that, take care. Have a great day. And we look forward to talking with you on the next episode.